you. Your calling is unique. Ephesians 2.10, Paul says that we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to, to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. I want you to hear this church. You are a masterpiece crafted by God. He has given you gifts, talents, and abilities that nobody else has because he has a unique calling and purpose for your life. You are made in the image of God. You are a work of art. And you might struggle with that idea. You might struggle with the idea that you're a masterpiece. You might struggle with the idea that you are uniquely made by God. And you might look at your life and go, I feel like I am junk. God does not make junk. At no point in life did he go, that's not good enough. God doesn't make junk. Jesus didn't die on a cross for the salvation of the world for junk. He died for those he loves and are crafted in his image with a plan and a purpose for their life. What you've done in life does not equal junk. What other people have done to you does not make you junk because you have been made and have value in God's eyes. But he has made you not to be a consumer. Your calling is not to keep a seat warm every third week of the month. Your calling is not to to consume, to watch more YouTube videos of your favorite preacher, even though I thank you that I can be your favorite preacher. You know, let's move on, right? It's not about more content. It's not about more worship music. You're not called to consume. God has called you to to contribute with good works that he has already preordained for you to do, which means before you were born, you had a calling, you had a purpose, you had gifts. And God has prepared you to walk in those when we answer his calling. The third one is this. God chose my calling before I was born. Galatians 1.15. It pleased God in his kindness to choose me and call me even before I was born. What undeserved mercy. Jeremiah 1.5. Before I shaped you in the womb, I knew all about you. Before you saw the light of day, I had holy plans for you. Before you had a name, before your parents came back with a pregnancy test, you had a call, you had a destiny, you had a future, you had gifts that God had given to you. You didn't earn it. You didn't deserve it. You didn't get to a certain point where you qualify for it. It was given to you before you were even born, before you took your first breath. Before you kicked your mom in her stomach, God had a destiny for your life. Don't fall into the lie that you are an accident. Children can be born, right? They can be accidental parents. They can't be accidental children. Because God has called you, planned you, purposed you. Bless you. Don't fall into the lie that you're, you're an accident. Because if you believe you're an accident, you will live like an accident. But when you are called, when you, when you know that, that God has purposed you, created you, even in your mother's womb, knit you together for you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God was thinking about you before you were even there. And he gave you a plan and a purpose for your life. You can live knowing that you don't, you don't have to live by accident. You don't have to stumble through life. You can connect to what God's plan for your life is and know that you will live your best life. The fourth thing is this. My sins and mistakes don't change my call. My sins and my mistakes don't change my call. You may have messed up in life. Who hasn't messed up? Any, anybody. Anybody not mess up in life? Wow. You know that, that you have not lost God's call for your life? Even what people have done to you hasn't taken God's call away from your life. Even what you've experienced, even the injustice, God still looks at you with plans and purposes and good things. My sins and mistakes don't change my call. Don't let the mistakes or sins cause you to abandon God's call. Don't don't leave it there in the corner. The only person that wants you to avoid God's plan and God's call for your life is the devil. Because he has a plan for your life. And it's not to bless you. It's not to protect you. It's not to guide you. 
through to God's eternal life. 1 Timothy 1, 12 to 13 says, By calling me into his service, Paul speaking here, Jesus has judged me trustworthy, even though I used to be a blasphemer and a persecutor and contemptuous. I love that word, contemptuous. Mercy, however, was shown me, because while I lacked faith, I, and I acted in ignorance. Paul is describing his call from God. Paul was a, a, a person who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, incredible man of God. But Paul was a religious terrorist. He literally dragged families, killed people, and threw them in prison for believing Jesus. He would go from place to place, town to town, city to city, in order to do that. But even though he messed up, even though his life was full of sin, he recognizes the fact that when he lacked faith, God didn't lack faithfulness. When he acted in ignorance, God was forming his plan to come together. And it was in, in the book of Acts where we read, I think it's Acts chapter 10 or so, that, that God met Paul on his road to Damascus to execute more people. And that's where Paul's life changed and was transformed. And he heard the call of God for his life. Which means to me that God can use all of our mess, all of our struggle, all of our sin, all of the things that have gone wrong in our life and in the people around us and what other people have done to us, the heinous things that have happened to us, is actually all what God uses as raw material to be incorporated into the plan that he has for your life, the calling that he has in your life. Was he the originator of all of that? No, but God is a master at work that uses all the things that happens to us and makes room in our calling for each and every one of those things that goes wrong. Yeah. So don't let what's happened to you, what you've done disqualify you. God is going to use that for his call on your life. There's this great story um, from a guy called Chuck Colson. And um, Chuck was one of the most powerful men in, in America and obviously probably part of the, the known world. He was assistant to the President of the United States, and then he got involved in some scandal called Watergate. Anybody under the age of 30 probably doesn't know what Watergate is, but pretty much there was a big scandal and people went to jail. Okay? He went to prison, and in prison he found Christ. He became a believer. And he saw that in prisons, like people lacked God. They needed Jesus. And so he started a ministry called Prison Fellowship, which is now in over 150 countries and has blessed millions of people. But when God created him, he knew that he would be going from presidency to prison and into purpose. Don't let what's happened to you stop you from receiving God's call for your life. Yeah. 